All right, I got a brand new scene, never before touched. And before we do anything, let's see the output. Let's see actually what we made. All right, there we go. There we go. This is what you're going to get if you follow perfectly or close enough. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is delete. No, let's actually not delete the default cube. Let's save it. Give it a new life. You got a reprieve from the governor. I'm wasting time here. All right, sorry about that. Um, call it um, letters, I guess. The letters, because this is where it's coming from. And I can get this out of the way right now. Let's go ahead and get a mesh. Um, control A. Icosphere. And I think we can save some bandwidth and go to level one. And um, I'm going to go GZ up so I can actually see it. And let's give it a material. Let's do some shading. All right. And it looks nice, but a new material. We're going to give it a name. Call it, I don't know, flashy? Flashy. Get rid of the Prinzel BDSB letters. And go ahead and search for Emission. Emission. Okay, there we go. Plug it in and it's all set. And you can give it whatever color you want. I'm going to give it sort of a yellowishy, orangey, um, maybe level eight. And for this to actually do anything, we have to go over here and um, we're in EV because EV has that lovely bloom. Everyone loves the bloom, right? And the next thing I'm going to do is GZ and get this out of the way. I don't want to see you anymore. I'm going to hit 7 and zoom out a little bit um, and still say I don't want to see you anymore. Just go way far away because otherwise it kind of gets in the way. Okay, now um, let's go back to my camera. It's focused on the default cube, which is cool. And I'm going to select that default cube. Oh, no, let's re rename the Icosphere. And we're going to call it the, um, I don't know, um, the bits. I don't know. I can't think of a word right now. So bits. All right. And now the Icosphere is selected. Let's go to Geometry Nodes. There we go. And a brand new Geometry Node. The input uh, we can go ahead and get rid of. And there goes the box. Um, Control A and String. There you go. Okay, string. We're going to combine it in there, and you see the bad color because, no, it says we don't like that. Don't like that game. Um, let's just type, um, I don't know. Well, we called it letters. Let's keep with, keep with letters. So letters, um, yeah, you can't have that. One thing does not equal. See, and the colors are different. I'm partially colorblind, so I'm not going to be always tell, but I can tell that's different. Um, let's go string to curves. String to curves. There we go. And now um, let's go center. There's our center. Perfect. Um, now we're getting closer. Not there yet. Um, geometry. So we don't actually have any geometry. So if I were to add my um, particle system, let's go ahead and do that now. My particle system, I could say um, start the particles and it's coming out the center because there's no geometry. But getting a, uh, go ahead and open this up. Letters modifier because I'm going to be switching between these two. Now you can pin things down if you want, but I don't want to do that. I want to switch. All right, particle system, geometry nodes. All right, move this over a little bit. Um, again, we want it to come from the faces, but we don't have any faces. So control A and we're going to search. Next thing we want to do is fill curve. So you fill up those curves. So now the mesh says we've got seven instances, but do we have um, any faces yet? No. So doesn't matter if you play, you're not going to get anything. It's like that crying emoji, emoticon. Remember that one? It cries. Uh, that's what I think of. Okay, now I want to say realize instances. So I say realize instances. And one little thing I would say is the default's 250, but for right now, let's keep it 30. So when we start over, um, reminder about hair particles, it sometimes gets a little like stuck doesn't like to learn new things, old dog, new tricks, that sort of thing. So it sometimes helps to give it a shift, even though in this case, it's not going to do anything, but you can still see it's not coming out of the right place. And the right place isn't exactly what I want either. So why don't I go ahead and control A one more time. There's going to be more. And in transform geometry. And now I can say, let's go ahead and rotate on the X and stick straight up. There we go. On your feet, soldier. And maybe 90 degrees for that one. It's still a little off, but uh, not too bad. In fact, what I'll do is I'll go to hit the zero key, zoom out a little bit, and go ahead and G this over. Uh, G. And then I'll R this over. And now I kind of get it better. Hit the zero key, and yeah. And now I can use my R and R. R twice. It's not 
totally level, but I don't want to muck with it anymore. Um, it's better. Oh, another thing I should say, I should have said sir, earlier, but Control S is your like best friend. You always want to be saving these things, especially with particle systems. A blender, you know, likes to crash sometimes. Loves to crash sometimes. All right, so now I can just constantly hit Control S because every so often, the one time you forget, it's going to you know have an issue. Um, can I zoom in? I think I probably should make that easier. So yeah, you can kind of see that there are still the crying eye emoji. Um, that's not what we want. We want it coming out of the faces. And the faces should be there. Um, let's go to the particle system and one thing, the source uh, faces, that's what we want. Use the modifier stack. And look at that. Look at that. Bob's your uncle. You're all... I mean, this just solves so many problems now. Um, but not quite there yet. So the next part I think we'll do is I don't want to admit halos. I want to render an object. An object I want to render is that icosphere we made, which we call it, we call it bits. Okay, and there we go. And if I click over to here, I can kind of see that it's perfect. Um, one thing also to notice is that, well, yeah, my letters are still there, literally. <laughs> I see what I did there. Okay, that's in kind of an easy fix. There might be other ways. This was the way that uh, I figured out. Um, Control A and search for set material. Yeah, there we go, material, and put it right there. And okay, now the material hasn't been set yet. Eh, for now, let's use the uh, the flashy. And now you might be able to do something with this. I don't know, it kind of depends what you're looking for. But we're looking for uh, it being invisible. So the, the flash little bubbles are going to make up what you see there. So we want it to be not there. Back to the shading tab and a new material. There we go, right there. And we're going to call this um, nothing. I know nothing. Not really big on. I didn't. Never protected. Pro, perfected my Schultz uh, icon. But I'm wasting time here. Okay. So let's get rid of principled. And actually, it's not principled. Would have worked. Could have just done alpha way down there. Um, and then in material over here, make sure your blending mode is alpha blend. And that will get rid of everything. And you should have no more letters. Once you go back to the geometry nodes and say, not flashy anymore, sorry flashy, I'm gonna miss you. But anyway, all right, there. And you see the outline, but I also could not be clicked on it, and there you go. Now, you see, that doesn't really spell out the word very well. True, true, I acknowledge that. Um, I have one of those mice, mouses, mices, that uh, it has a, it's the magic mouse, which magically keeps changing my direction all the time. Okay. Um, all right, so what I want to do is go back to the letter particle system and say these things are just too big. So where is that render? Yes, scale. 0 0.05. I'm in centimeters right now. I should point, point that out. But 0 0.005, so a tenth of that size. And I think, yeah, I think I like that better. So now you see the icosphere... You know, that kind of it's rudimentary, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to do control S again. Like I said, always control S. And I'm going to say that um, we are going to bump it up to uh, 10,000 for now. I'm going to render it higher, but see, I mean, I kind of have to. Sorry. Um, because, yeah, it's still, still not quite enough. Um, but we're so close now. Um, but now you can see that the particles are all falling down to earth. Um, that's because the particle system, when you bring it in, automatically has, um, was it force field settings? No, field weights. And one weight is gravity, which we all, we all suffer from, right? So zero gravity will make a difference. Um, but now, if I zoom in here, you can see it's sort of going this way. Why? Well, it's um, exiting through its normals on a trajectory that's defaulted. The normals, Nah, it's hard to explain, but they're sort of the way that things are facing. I guess maybe it's not so hard. Um, but they have a, an initial velocity too, so going out on their normals. Now, they don't. They're just sort of staying in place because there's no gravity and there's no initial velocity on the normal. Which is fine, except um, control S. I don't want that. I want everyone to start at the same time. So the frame start is 1, the frame end is 200, and that's not good enough. Let's have it at one. So everybody actually starts at 100%, which is awesome. And the lifetime, you have to bump it up. That will actually go to about 250, but 
we're not going to render that long of an animation anyway. Right now it's only 30. Okay, so that part's fine. And the next step is to actually make them move. They're not going to move on their own. An object at rest, all that sort of Newton stuff. Let's go ahead and go to the top view, zoom out a little bit, and Control A or shift A. If I said control, I usually mean shift. Okay, and then we're gonna go to a force field right there. Turbulence, turbulence is good. Uh, for turbulence, it's selected, go down to get the physics of the turbulence and just start at, I don't know, five. Um, go back to my camera view and now I can see what it does. So, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I kind of like that, and this is where you kind of like dealer's choice, have some fun fiddling around with it. Now I'm gonna actually will need to extend my scene, so let's go to 120, and I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of liking that. Um, it's kind of even going off the screen there, but uh, yeah, kind of exploding, or if you reversed it, so if you created something and reversed it, you could have the, the particles coming in, sort of, you know, well, reversing it. Um, but. I kind of like them exploding. I mean, I could mess with this more, but I also kind of like the way it's going. And now I'm going to do something a little fun because uh, we're so close now. I'm going to hit the seven. I'm going to go back and I am going to maybe move the camera out just a little more. Okay. And I'm going to go to keyframe zero or frame zero. And I want the camera to, I'm going to hit the N key and hit the I key and just memorize the location because otherwise I won't save it. Um, I'll scroll out just a little more. Hey, I see the icosphere, yay. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, for, oh, before I do that, select the camera, which is selected, go to constraints, add object constraint, and I'm gonna say track to, um, remember that my letters, there they are, track my letters. So no matter where I move the camera, it's always looking at the letters. Um, I don't wanna move it anywhere, I'll hit the escape, but I do wanna go to, I don't know, 30, and I'm gonna put another keyframe there. And then I'm gonna to go to about, I don't know, 90. 90, and then I'm gonna move my camera about here. Um, maybe I will even move the location out a little bit further, farther. And then again, if you don't hit the I key here, you will lose all that hard work you did. So at the beginning waits and then moves. And we'll go ahead and look at it through the camera's eye. All right. Here we go, beginning that starts exploding and then you're moving along with it. So kind of a matrix-like effect? Not really, but all right, control S. So we've done almost everything. However, I do want the background, the world color to be black. So I can just easily do that there. One thing I'll note is when you do render, um, you want to, you can, you can do it with transparent, but the transparent seems to lose the bloom effect or just like it, it decreases it. So I would say render it over black um, and then when you're in another editor, then just use a screening mode. So, okay, let's go ahead and zoom back in so you can kind of see it there. Um, in fact, go ahead and give it a little more size. All right, there's other better ways to do that. So now I just lost my change. Okay, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's pretty good. Uh, final touches, I would say go ahead and get that motion blur on there. It's gonna slow things down a little, especially with a lot of particles. But there we go, let it run a few times from the right angle, my poor mouse. There we go, okay. And yeah, they kind of, so yeah, the adjusting that turbulence is gonna do a lot of it, uh, different effects, but it depends what you want. Um, and you can even have the turbul uh, the, um, the turbulence coming from the back and zooming in and kind of like exploding towards you more. That would be kind of a cool effect, but that's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and set it to a really, really high number. I'll post that because I, I kind of need to see what works and what doesn't. And then I'm going to, um, yeah, post it. Hopefully this helps. If it did, let me know. Um, and in the comments, I'll be able to thank the people that um, help with this kind of stuff. But yeah, I think this is a cool effect and you could do a lot with it and just take it from there. So that's it for now. Cheers.